What up, guys? Welcome to Base Damage. And this week, podcast number 71, uh, it's just me and Frank. What's up, bro? Hey. Hey, man. Uh, glad to have you back on. It's been a bit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, oh, boy. The, 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 today's is going to be really good. Uh, probably trigger a whole bunch of people at the same time, but uh, I'm fucking used to that now with this channel. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm ready to, to to debunk the hate that de- that, that is uh, this set for Gurren Logon. Exactly. Um, before we get into that, um, Frank, you were telling me earlier that the ban list has dropped, the new ban list for JP, so I actually haven't even fucking looked at it yet. So I'm going to be looking at that later on and then uh, see if probably the next podcast is going to be a discussion for that, and I'll see who yeah. all wants to be on the roster for that. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I I don't know anything about it currently. If anybody wants to go ahead and spoil it for me, by all means, throw some comments down there. I don't care. Um, so yeah, the big, um, I was gonna say elephant in the room, but the big drill in the room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, because uh, that is a big drill. Um, uh, the drill is my penis. I'm kidding. Sorry, bad. Okay. <laughs> um. Makes you wonder if we're going to get past the eight-minute mark. Oh, bad. Anyway, um, okay, if anybody does... I'm sorry, there's just so many people just hit a dislike on that. I'm sorry, please like. Anyway, um, no, for real. Okay, Gurren Lagann has dropped in JP. We are supposed to be getting Gurren Lagann in English this summer, quote-unquote. I realize I'm saying that in an audio podcast. They're, they're, you cannot see quotation mark fingers that I'm doing right now. Um, Hopefully they don't delay it. Hopefully not. Um, I know some people are like, why the heck? Asking why Bang Dream got pushed back when it's Bushi's own product. And I know Riaz was saying they may not want it like in the spring circuit, like as far as being like too heavy in the spring circuit. So I don't, I don't know. But bruh, summer can't get here quick enough for me. Um, I, I mean, I, on the bright side, I mean, it could be used technically competitively for fall, if anything. This is very true, and I will be very, especially because. The, the regionals for spring are not actually for uh, invites to Worlds, to, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, uh, yes. They're reformatting it. So this is like the team thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but that means we have very good chances of seeing a whole bunch of crazy stuff top for the fall regionals and possibly go to Worlds because of that. Um, but I know, I know there's been mixed opinions, strong opinions. And like you said, uh, trying to debunk the hate. Like, uh, let's see. Gurren Logan itself as a series is such an old, older series. Um, God, I watched it in college. Ugh, it was mm. so long ago. And I think they were just hoping it would get like, like, I don't, the, the super royal bushy treatment and get like everything broken like known to man but yeah admittedly it didn't get like the strongest like setup people were wanting but it's still pretty dang cool and good yeah i don't i, I, I definitely yeah. agree with that mm-hmm. um but i've been going over it now with it being out uh what was it they've done all four colors we're not going to be going over each individual card but we're more going to be talking about like our opinions on like the colors, the specific cards, stuff like that for the set. Um, I have an entire page of notes here. <laughs> um, it's also kind of crazy that Blue only got like eleven cards. Yeah, they basically they basically got the the Titan treatment treatment God, like. Dude. Well, I guess with volume just two, spam for a bunch of like movements. Yeah, because yeah. you kind of have to do the whole relentless rats thing. Because I think there was there was a level zero that had like a you could run any number of copies effect yeah so, yeah that's the mugen that's, that's the mugen uh that little mini ship that like blow like when you shoot it like when they defeat it, it blows up in particles and it just blows up more stuff <laughs> oh shit yes i remember that now oh my god uh yeah that's it's gonna be interesting i think the zero for that was also like a it was a reverser or a stock bomb or something of that nature yeah it was like a i think it was a shoot to bottom of that card i think it's like the, oh, the blue titans from uh volume two of aot oh, they do have that now yeah okay cool um 
I just noticed that that was like a really weird number, low ass number for them to have, considering it was a hundred card set, but uh, they they gave more to red and yellow for that. So yeah, they wanted um, to focus more on the main characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, that's kind of more the appeal. That is fair, and like especially like some of the combos later on, like. I know we were discussing some of the combos beforehand, before recording, but it's still some really cool stuff. And if nothing else, before we get into this, I, I really love the flavor for the effects. As far as kind of a really awesome homage and tribute to the like the, the anime, mm-hmm. it just it, I really like. I want it, Gurren Lagann is one of my favorite anime like of all time, straight up, and to see so many of the effects be fucking relevant and they actually, hey, you know, obviously the fucking level one Kamina going to memory and shit like that. That was, that was that's so cool. And the the whole mm-hmm. level three, uh, the whole red um, separation combo to be able to bounce into like five attacks was like so cool for the final fight thing. So I, I really love that. Mm-hmm. Um, But let's start with this, with... Let's just start at the beginning with the yellow stuff. Obviously, like I was saying, the, the Kamina. Um, uh, on reverse searcher combo um, with mm. a 1k1 shot trigger. Uh, but, okay, like how with vo- uh, AOT Volume 2, the Aaron, um, the new Aaron that's like the new hotness and everything that has the bounce back to hand effect after you do the successful reverse and everything. This Kamina instead goes to memory. It, it still is like if it gets frontal attacked, bounce this thing to memory. And I'm like, aw, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, this card's pretty neat. <laughs> indeed. Like, I'm just, I got like probably three cards throughout this thing, throughout uh, yellow alone that I kind of want to point out and mention stuff for. But w- what else do you have that we want, that you want to talk about, bro? Go for it. As far as the Kamina card goes? Uh, Kamina, anything else in the yellow, just by all means, dude. Uh, bro, just share thoughts, dude. Yeah. It's, it's all good. Um, yeah. Uh, honestly, like I guess when it comes to like, deck building and Grand Lagon, mm-hmm. it seems like um, a good portion of the color you're using is definitely yellow. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah, yellow has just a lot of a good variety of a strong and good utility effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like this Kamina is just fantastic. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just basically an Aaron clone. It almost fulfills similar similar functions that um, my Fate to Bear Aaron basically does. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a little unfortunate that like um, at, at, like the way, any way like it, you can even side attack the uh, Kamina and it'll still go to memory. Really, I thought it, it makes said you frontal. a little bit sad. Really? Oh, okay, cool. I I, I must have missed yeah. that. I thought it just said frontal. My bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess way. I'll give a little bit of an honorable mention to the uh, the Yomoko engine, the uh, the two two and the two one. Mm-hmm. That card, surprisingly, while not being a level three, it's kind of a pseudo level three in its own right, because mm-hmm. its effect is actually pretty decent. All right. Wait, please, please carry on. Like, like as far as oh, yeah. is this something you've been testing like in your current build? Because I know you said you still needed more copies of the level one Kamina. Um. Yeah. So is that the the main one of the main things you've been using for this, for it so far? Um. Actually, right now I've been testing out the um just mainly red, yellow, splash green. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do plan eventually to uh I'm gonna give this build this current build I have like a bit of about of a month mm-hmm. to play, and then I'm gonna switch to Yoko Waifu, yeah. which basically I'm just only <laughs> mainly just playing Yoko at that point. Hey, uh, mono yellow. Good. It is all good, bro. To each their own. Um, speaking of Yoko, the level three, um, it was what uh, early play condition, uh, heal on play, and mm. it. I, I thought it was a little weird, but I guess at the same time it's not a climax combo, so I can understand the cost for it. Like if it was a climax combo and you still had this cost, there'd be an issue. But it's on attack. Give another character. Um, the effect that when they reverse the battle opponent, you pay the cost, which was, I think, you pay one, pitch one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can burn for one. Um, yep. Which isn't bad. Like like I said, it, it's the fact that it has to throw it to another character. If it could choose itself, that would still be really cool. Um, but once again, it's not a climax combo. And if you can do this at level two, that's actually kind of cool. Um, yeah. But what... Yeah, what 
yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that card's actually probably one of the one of the best cards in the set because mm -hmm. it. Uh, you can do a lot of things with this card. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact you can early play it, so like you can start. You can have like a really strong level two game with with that card. Mm -hmm. Just playing that card alone, you can have a really good. Uh, you have a really strong um, level two game with you know, d dishing out a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Which, and admittedly, um, she was only like ninety five hundred. Yeah. So I guess that's fair, giving it to another character that might be bigger and be able to get over something for reverse. Granted, she could mm -hmm. probably easily do it at level two. I don't know. Yeah. But and also, you also um, also Grand Logan has a lot of cards that um, has a lot of cards that um, give boosts to characters. Like they tend to give a lot of three thousand power boosts. Mm -hmm. The zero Yomako, uh, the zero Yoko uh, stock bomb gives three thousand to any level two or higher. Uh, Cordial does another three thousand boost. And, uh, yeah, there's just many ways to give boosts in uh, Gurren Lagann, so it's very easy to fulfill that kind of condition. <laughs> and uh, she also, she just has really, that kind of effect gives Yoko a lot of good synergy with uh, level threes and um, and also, like, just having a good uh, a good finishing endgame, essentially. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, it just said to one of your other characters, so mm -hmm. if you were to splash her into, say, doing something like the Beastman build or something of that nature... Because I know there was a there was a level three that was a clock shooter later on, and we'll get to that. Yeah. But so if you could cl give him those effects and go on reverse clock shoot and burn for one, I thought was I thought it'd be like an interesting combo to do for that. I think. Yeah. Uh, that's possible to do. But um. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that actually be pretty good because you're almost guaranteeing two damage essentially. Absolutely. Um. Let's see, between that, let's see, the other, one of the other really awesome level threes at yellow, I thought for this, because the effect being optional, was the, mm -hmm. uh, the level three Keton. Um, yeah. Because it was, it was a climax combo, also with a 1k1 shot trigger, um, but it's, it, it was if, if his damage got canceled. I thought that was really cool that that was optional. It's kind of like the, oh, you didn't do damage this turn? Here, try again, and then do his effect to summon a level zero and then try to still push for some damage. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, um, that card's pretty interesting. Um, it is kind of a little bit under the radar kind of mm -hmm. card. Um, hey, that just means cheat when it comes out here. I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to be hitting people with Keton in the face, you know? No, it's mm -hmm. whatever. Um, it sure may not be as strong as some of the other crazy shenanigans they can do, but... I still thought that was an interesting little... I, I feel like he needed to get a shout-out. You know, K Keton, you know, went out like a boss. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, also, Keton also has pretty good synergy with the level 3 Yoko. Like, you can... Mm -hmm. um, if like you, Because, you know, it's Garn Logan. Like, with the... You easily just give him a, a 3,000 boost. Um, attack with the Yoko. Give him a cancel burn. Not cancel burn, sorry. A uh, reverse burn. <laughs> Yeah. And then uh, when they do cancel, and if you happen to reverse the character, not only can can you do the uh, reverse oh. burn, burn for one damage, but then you could summon the King King Tom, well, cool. and then do and then try to potentially do two two more damage. Well, actually, I question the timing of that. I just want to make certain that I'm getting this right because if that this is if that's doable, mm -hmm. that's actually really awesome. It says when his damage gets canceled, so that would be before he gets a chance to reverse them. Would the effect go uh, Yes, that is correct. Okay, but I'm just trying to make certain that I remember the timing on this. Um, mm. Yeah. So that actually brings I think it has to do with... Uh, let's see if I can find him. Uh, I think it has to do with uh, if it's an auto effect, I believe. Correct. Because... Um, basically to explain that, because the timing for the Yoko being on reverse, if I remember correctly, the Keton just stated when his damage got cancelled. If it was like a after everything was said and done, I cannot recall the exact timing of that. Because if you if that's still able to go off with the on reverse burn, that would be really cool. And then just still be able to potentially dish out some more like that. Yes, that <clears throat> excuse me. That would be really cool. Yeah. Mm, sorry I had a burp stuck there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh, I definitely can't confirm that though. I would have to probably uh probably play the card. It's or, cool. I test out the combo essentially. I'm gonna go ahead and be pulling that up to look at it. Uh while, you, while I'm doing that, is there any other cards you want to mention as far as, like, shout-outs for yellow while yeah. we're still in yellow? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Actually, I didn't get to finish about the uh, Yomoko because I actually kind of I lost in thought of it. Oh, you're fine. You're <laughs> um, fine. Yeah, so the Yomoko, uh, it's a good engine, or it's a really good combo because um, the Yomoko can change into the 2-2 mm -hmm. um, by playing the Climax card. So you change into her for free because she... Um, the teacher, the teacher version basically basically goes in the stock, mm -hmm. and then so then what you do is because her because her climax her climax card is a stock soul, uh, the moment she attacks, she basically almost pays for herself to do the uh, effect to give everybody cancel burn, mm -hmm. which is it's essentially really good. You know, you're not paying, you're not going out of your way to pay out so much resources to um, to effectively get this effect to go off and um and also and also that card also has really good synergy with yoko as well and so if you're able to resolve three cancel burns on top of another like you know like a reverse burn mm -hmm. so you're able to get a lot of instances of damage to go through absolutely and uh and also like, it's just kind of like you know things that i've been thinking about and just in terms of builds yeah yeah like i it's the kind of card that like when I think about it, it's like it's the kind of card that it like the card gets better like late game essentially. Mm -hmm. Like because when you play that card at like level three, it's actually quite threatening. Yeah, like it may not be as many like instances of cancel burn as say like Yami from Tor, but mm -hmm. still being able to give that to everybody is a thing. Like like and people yeah. don't need to underestimate that. Um, to confirm what I was saying earlier, it states at the end of this card's attack, which would actually be after reverse. Mm. So it's at the end of this card's attack, if you got the climax, and damage dealt by this was cancelled, you can do the cost and then be able to do it. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to make certain that I had the timing on that correct, because I didn't want to state one thing, or, you know, we state one thing, and they're like, hold up, Billy, Kool-Aid, you're wrong, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. no, um, so, no, you're absolutely correct, so give him the fucking cancel burn, whether it be off of that level 3 Yoko, or whatever, and then just still do all of that and then still bring out King Keaton and be like, hey, bitches, I'm back. So. Yeah. <laughs> so now yeah, that'd then, be... that actually makes him at least somewhat decent as a finisher. Um, Interesting, because it states, and any damage dealt by this was canceled. So mm. that actually brings in an idea. Because it states, if any damage dealt by this was canceled, you can do the effect. Meaning, if his initial damage goes through and sticks... And then the cancel, uh, then the uh, the on reverse burn from the Yoko gets canceled. You could still do the effect. Oh, that's pretty nuts. <laughs> now, now that I think about, it, if that's the way that you know, heart of the cards, um, that's where I'm checking this at. If it says any damage dealt by this during this turn was canceled, because mm. it gives him the effect to do burn, and mm -hmm. that's fucking cool right there. If that somehow yeah. works out magically that way, that would be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I could be, like I said, it's just the way that I'm trying to translate it here in my head. But anywho. Yeah. So, uh, watch out for teacher Yama, uh, Yoko, because one, she looked fabulous with glasses, I'm just saying. Anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, two more, I guess like I'll do like two more cards. Um, two more that. cards that I give shout outs to are the, um, the Yoko Brainstormer, because, mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure co it's no coincidence that Yoko and Armin being the same voice actress that they both have hex proof in both their sets. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. You have a yeah. very good point there. I was like, wait a minute. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> oh yeah. damn. I absolutely love that brainstorm card. Like it basically oh, yeah. say it basically is the main one of the main reasons why uh the Simon uh the level three Simon is basically playable. Mm-hmm. Because during your turn, you're able to at least give him Hexproof, so that way, like, you're able to avoid one of the big weaknesses of that card being, you know, rest or money counters, essentially. Mm -hmm. And, um... And then the... <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Uh, the, last card, uh, the last card I want to give shout-outs to is the uh, the Yoko promo, the 1-1... One, one, oh, yeah, the level 1 cost 1 card. I didn't even from... look over the promos. I am so sorry. Yeah, it's it's okay. all good. Please yeah, tell me so what it is. It's one of the promos from the the box from like the box essentially when you like when you open it. Okay. Um, yeah, like that card is insane. <laughs> like, what does she do? Because I actually do not know this one. Yeah. Her, her, okay, so her effect is a continuous effect that if the character opposite to her is cost zero or less, you can't reverse her. Oh shit! That, there was a Yoshiko in Sunshine that did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, she's a very good card. Like, cause that card basically just counters just basically any 
reverse combo and it just just says nope to bombs and it's just fantastic and you could that just sit on cool. that card and it's just great that is awesome no that's that's really cool yeah. oh my god she actually stops Aaron. <laughs> it's just like yeah it's like oh that's a really nice errand you have there be ashamed if it didn't go off <laughs> yeah um god, i'm yeah, actually thinking really yoko waifu might actually be a viable like a viable deck like in the meta <laughs> I mean, you just got to get four fucking copies of that promo, but you know, yeah. we'll, see, we'll see if that gets expensive as the fucking um, uh, Petite Mekon from TLR was like mm-hmm. $30, $40 at some point. I think $30 at some point. I don't know. Um, yeah. But no, that, that's freaking awesome. I actually did not know about that promo. At all. I did not check that. That was my fault for not checking that. Um, so yellow is really awesome. Primarily Daigurin uh, trait. Um green is a combination it's mostly like the beast man but there's nia in there who does share daigurin trait Mm -hmm. um her level three is a back row thing was kind of cool um as far as like the buff other than that it like didn't really strike me as too terribly um i say that i was actually originally thinking she was going to be the hexproof character see that would have been cool at the same time but uh Oh, well. Probably would have been copying AOT too much. Huh? <laughs> she would have been the uh, the hexproof character, and Yoko would have been the kiss of death character. Oh wait, sorry. Um, <laughs> press F to pay respects. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. Um, that level three is actually pretty decent. Um, you mainly run her because of the whole um looking like looking up to X amount of cards. Yeah, being able um, to get your combos basically. Yeah. Yeah, because there was somebody asking about that. Oh, I can't remember what card it was. Um, I forget what card it was. Someone was asking about that on Global earlier, asking, well, why would you want to, you know, grab a card from the top X number cards of your deck? And I'm like, because oh, right, right, the right. Yeah, it had to do with the, it had to do with the uh, level three uh, Mikasa from uh, AOT correct. Volume 2. You're correct. And, you know, maybe if they listening, it's because what if you need a climax or you need some kind of combo card? And it just happens to be chilling there within the top five. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's why. Because you need combos, you need climaxes, you need stuff to be able to go off. And that for hell, there's like, I know someone stated there was the Maya from TOR that does that. The Leafa from mm. um, SAO, uh, the Clock Shooter Leafa from SAO does that. And this Nia doing the same thing for getting your combos and shit. That, that's kind of what you need it to be able to do. And then. So it's really good support all around. The what global yeah. fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, the last effect that it had, where it's like tap this to stand a Simon, I guess is like off of using if you had to tap one for like a brainstormer effect or something. Mm. Um, but either way, that's still kind of cool. It's um, uh, it's kind of what it is. Uh, the Lord Genome, uh, Lazengan, uh combo I thought was really cool. It's like, play this one level 3 to heal on play, and then do this other combo to pull out a clock shooter. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah, like, that's pretty neat. Yeah, or like a chance of a clock shooter. It's like the um, the level 3 Yuki from SAO. When it's played, you have to uh, check the top card of your deck. Uh, I think for mm. the Lost Gone, it was like if it reveals a green character. Yeah. Something like that. So, if you do mono green Beastman deck, it's guaranteed to go off or whatever it's really cool i can't remember the exact right. thing off the top of my head i'll actually pull that up in a second um while i'm doing that just to confirm that um while i'm pulling that up uh what other green cards did you think were prominent um definitely the the level zero neo that card's pretty pretty dang good that card's mm-hmm. probably one of the best cards in the saw it's it's pretty awesome and for those oh, who yeah, that's like the one that, like it's like a Ricky, but like it's um rather mm-hmm. than like doing the like pay pay one stock and then uh, take a clock damage, it's um you're taking you're taking your stock and putting as clock damage. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, on play, send a stock to your clock, and then search mm-hmm. your deck for any level one or lower character. Yep. So you can't do it going first. I'm mean, granted you couldn't do that with the other Rikis anyway, but that's still really good. I mean. Push yourself to yeah. level one quicker, get your combos off. Why the fuck wouldn't you? <laughs> like that—that yeah. that is a really good card, actually. Yeah. Um, Viral's also not too bad. Like the zero zero, the zero zero Viral. That it's a 
He's a clock bomb, and he's able to um, pay one, discard one to salvage any character. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, one, well, he he was kind of a like really awesome character anyway, as far as the show's concerned. But yeah, no, like um, I'm trying to remember what all that one did. I'm so sorry. I'm just brain farting here. The Lazengan does check for a uh, green character. Sorry, I was just stating that. Yep. Um, which Viral was it? Because I'm trying to remember. Uh, it's Viral. It's kind of it kind of it's like him. It's like him in his like time skip uh, version. He's like you know like old and raggedy. Well, not like old. Like, you know, like he's like oh, old, yeah. like like long hair, raggedy, and all that stuff. It's like he looks like a runaway essentially. I got you. It's uh, it's a on play, pay one, pitch one, grab back a character. Yep. And then as well, he's a uh, level zero. Uh, level zero clock swap. Uh, so either yep. way, that, like, both of those effects are really good anyway. I, I think some people tend to underestimate the clock swappers or stock bombers in general. I, yeah. We had a discussion for that on uh, one of the Waifu Wars podcasts a while back. Uh, and I know that was something like people just kind of overlook it. Like, oh, problem cards? Get them the fuck off the field. You don't like a Habiki? Get it the fuck off the field. Stuff like that. You know, it's whatever. And um, being able to do that and then exchange out and get the cards that you need, considering it just grabs any character, is really good. So, mm-hmm. um, what do you what do you think about that level three event that they have? Um, it was it was uh, it was when Lord Genome's like, here, take this, mm-hmm. uh, because there was, so he took the power from the anti spiral dude and it was like. Ha, ah, this is what I was waiting for. Um, I just thought it was really, like, kind of crazy. Um, it's a level 3 zero-cost counter event. Um, the the <laughs> When you use it, if there are four or more cards in your clock, you can discard two Diger and Brigade characters to do, like, a couple different effects. You get back the Giga Drill, the Giga Drill Break... You get some mm-hmm. stock, and then you give a character across from uh, a character in battle negative three soul. Yeah, um, it specifically says a level three character in battle. That's kind of weird. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> sure, it's not uh, I mean, a darkness plan, but that's actually kind of crazy. Like if nothing else. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you don't have to pay any stock for that card's pretty nuts. Like, yeah. that's that's what I think. And uh, and I mean, and you're healing two, healing two to stock, which is pretty nuts. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. so, I, I think it's a pretty good counter. Mm-hmm. And uh, minus three is is quite a lot. You know, it's like it's all, they're almost essentially only like doing no damage essentially, cool. unless they triggered something, which at most they're doing either no damage or just doing one. Yeah, it, it doesn't um, it doesn't heal. It puts from the library to stock. I'm sorry, I had to look back at. It. I was like, that healed. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, That's like pretty naughty that it does that, mm-hmm. and uh, and also getting Giga Drill Break. It's like if you want to like meme on the opponent, and be like, "I will pierce the heavens," <laughs> exactly, and just like burn them for four. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that I hell I thought that event alone was kind of crazy anyway. Um, yeah, it's pretty silly. Yeah, uh, yeah the man. fact that you just literally only had to have a Gurn log on or uh or King Keaton on the field and then just because you have them on the board just burn four mm-hmm. at the end of your turn. Absolutely. Um uh, before which that's in the red cards and we'll, um before we get to the red cards was there any other uh green cards we needed to go over? Um the Lord Genome had a level 1 uh searcher combo as well. I thought that was kind of cool. And he could wall up. Yeah. He could get big. Yeah. Um, after you did the combo... Yeah, during the opponent's turn, he gets really big. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, if you did the combo, it gets plus 3k. Becomes a fuck... Mm-hmm. At that point, alone becomes a 7,500 wall. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I just thought it was weird that, like, it's it's a climax combo. It's on reverse. You still have to pay stock. I thought that was a little bit weird. But, eh, you know, that's whatever. Um... Uh, compress and then you know get a big character is still not bad at all um mm-hmm. it's, it's just the fact he can only grab green characters so it's more if you try to do the whole beast man deck thing um mm-hmm. but that's whatever um but yeah was there any other green stuff that i'm forgetting because I, I actually forgot about the viral completely that was my fault yeah um i mean if viral viral has like his cards are like 
okay, I guess. They're, mm-hmm. like, all right. I mean, if you're building, like, mono green or something, or doing red green, he's kind of, like, okay for what he does, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that the level zero, uh, the level zero, uh, I can't believe I can't say his name, Feral, there we go. No, you're fine. The level zero Feral is definitely his best card and mm-hmm. one of his redeeming factors. Uh, Enkidu, I kind of find him a little lackluster, I'll admit, because he, I feel like he doesn't do that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, like, all it essentially does is just become a really big beat stick, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... I think there was one card that was kind of interesting. It was a Viral. It was a 2-1 Viral that he... Uh, he has a Climax combo that... Oh, let's see. What was it? Oh, you're fine, dude. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a 2-1... It's a 2-1 Viral that when you play Gurnlog on Merge, um, he gives the uh, the Gurnlog on from the... Uh, trial deck. He gives it the ability. Um, when you battle, no, no players can play backup. Oh shit! Cool. I just realized I haven't looked over the trial deck yet. I feel bad. Yeah, now. trial deck is actually pretty solid. Like mm-hmm. when I opened it, like I can definitely guarantee say like if you buy at least two two trial decks of that of that of that set of Gurren Lagann, mm-hmm. um, it's pretty decent on its own. Okay. Um. I need to go look over that now. Like, I, I actually feel kind of bad that I forgot to look over that. That's my fault. Um, so, also from the from the trial deck. While we're on that, um, I know some of the trial deck pluses as of recent have had like uh, free runners and, and stuff like that. Have was there anything you know as far as like what people consider major staples? As far oh as yeah, like staple effects. What what was in there for that? Uh, definitely the Yoko Runner. The Yoko Runner is mm-hmm. fantastic. Absolutely love that card. All right. Um, easily, easily three or four of. <laughs> All right. Like personally, me, I'm running three because it's like, like the card has enough longevity that you don't even really need the fourth card. So it's like, it's like with three, like once you get the one on the board, like you, that's pretty much all you need. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna be scooting around. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I mean, before is fine. I mean, if people are playing yeah. for, I mean, that's cool too. Because I mean, the card's just overall good in general. I mean, you know, some people like to uh, like to play eight mil runners, so it's okay, you know. <laughs> Shout outs. Okay. Um. <laughs> anyway, before I you know get pe- more people triggered. Anyway. Um. So. Like, like green, I had mixed opinions on, but it was still really cool to see stuff like uh, to to see particular cards. Mm. Red, dude. Fucking red is, I, I, I may end up just making like a mono red deck or, or something really close to that. Um, mm. just to really be able to do that, fucking awesome. So the, the whole disconnect, separate combo. I think there was like, when, when they were doing like card of the day or something like that. Someone said it was called disconnect or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently it's called separate as far as like yeah. what heart of the cards translate states. Um. So red is where all, basically, I think all Daigurin, as far as uh, the traits are concerned, if not all, almost all. Yeah. Um, and it's basically mostly Gurren Logan and Simon, mm-hmm. essentially. Shout outs to Buddha. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, but before the whole separate combo thing, um, we were talking about the level three Simon, that climax combo, on reverse, burn for four. After you pay the cost, which was... Oh, uh, the cost was... Uh, I'll look it up in a second. Um, oh, the cost uh, The cost was um, pay one, discard a card. Was pay one, discard one? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but, like... That, sadly, this is one of the cards that's been getting a little bit of heat from the community. And... Yeah. I, I feel that if there was a single change to this card... It's because of the last effect. If they changed one part of this, it'd be completely and totally fine. And this would actually be one of the more broken cards I've like ever, you know, as far as like ever seen. His mm. last effect, like outside of the climax combo, really cool. He has another effect that states, uh, you can basically make it so your opponent can't activate backup. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. I wish that said events as well. If it stated your opponent could not activate backup or events from hand, 
it would fix it would fix everyone's issues with that mm. um I, I, I say everyone's issues there's probably more issues than that because some people are apparently just against the whole four burn thing yeah I, I guess it's like what I said uh, before recording this video um, mm -hmm. back in 2015 when uh, Sword Art Online first came out oh, for, uh, I forgot to say the two oh, Sword Art Online 2 when it first came out in 2015 mm -hmm. and when like scene almost like the biggest thing that came out at, on the, in that year uh, including Kantai as well. Yeah. Uh, like, Burn 4 was, like, the scariest thing back then, because it was just, like, if... It was just, like, people were like, oh, my God, if I take 4, I basically lose, essentially. Like, people had the mentality of, like, taking 4 was just a scary amount of damage. Mm -hmm. And And now, at this point, because, because there's... I mean, if you take into consideration of JP sets, um, as time has gone by, it's almost been three years since Xenon has come out. Mm -hmm. Um... People have been kind of been desensitized off of the burn four because there's so many different variety of finishers. This is true. That people think that burn four is really not that great, and it's just like I mean, burn four is burn burn four. It's like that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's still lethal damage. So it's like if you take the four damage, two things are happening. Either one, you basically won because four damage is almost ha like basically half half of a level. Over half, but yeah. yeah, a little over half. So you either basically won that turn, or basically won the game, or you're in a huge winning position to the point where you might actually win with just one more attack, essentially. Yeah, exactly. it just brings you that much closer to winning. Yeah, like I can understand where people are obviously gonna like people are gonna argue the fact of last shot being better because her four damage being before your opponent would get the opportunity to do. Um, darkness plan or, or compass stuff like that um, sure or hell I forget it was like the opposition by a shield or whatever it's like uh, SAO ordinal scale now has like a fucking darkness plan thing I just forget what it was called um, but and so sure you can't stop that four damage with the with events um, and then you can only be able to do that to stop the normal three ish damage that would come from last shot seen on and basically, people were trying to argue the fact of Simon's uh, from from Grand Logan being an on reverse is 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 complete opposite timing. And I can understand where that would you know get some people, and it'd be like, okay, sure, it's not as good, but it's still good for fuck's sake. Like, like it's almost a whole yeah. fucking level if you do. Yeah. If you if somehow Simon's damage sticks and that burn four sticks as well, you 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 pushed your opponent up a whole fucking level if they if you were behind in damage, mm -hmm. like, eh, sure. Yeah. But also, and as I mentioned earlier before, like there are cards that exist in the set that actually, basically, essentially saved this card mm -hmm. to being actually viable. That being one, of, basically being the Yoko brainstorm. Yeah. Because by having that card, it basically makes the event card irrelevant essentially because they can't yeah. darkness plan her darkness exactly. plan him. So and, uh, I also oh, yeah, sorry. You're good. Okay. Um actually and also one thing, uh I will say this. Um one redeeming factor to this card is that the fact that it has the last effect to be able to get the Kalina marker, mm -hmm. um, it actually technically kinda um saves itself from its actual ultimate weakness and that's the sack counter like you know like those character counters that are like you pay the cost and sack one of your characters to kind of like the, do like that anti-change kill this is true I've I've seen the oh yeah yeah as far as like uh because you can still pay the cost for those anti-changes and whatnot mm -hmm. um I'm trying to remember I, I know I've seen it before and I can't remember a, a, a example currently but yes you're absolutely correct like if you were to be able to sack off that character um, Fate had a card that did it. I forget. I think that was an event, though. Um, yeah. But as far as like, if if they did a character to be able to uh, be able to sack a character to be able to stop that, sure. Mm -hmm. That that would hurt. That would hurt a lot. But because, like you said, he has the built-in effect of going, nope. <laughs> yeah. So. And then Yoko Hexproof. That like, if you put do both of those, this ends up being just as strong. If not, mm. dare I say, because 
there's nothing really in SAO that gives Xenon hexproof, is there? Like uh, we... there. Well, the closest thing they have is Machine of Ice Xenon, but that's about it. With the whole, like, you know, you rest it to be like, oh, you can't use backup or events during the battle. That's true. It... Oh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. um... Which, there's a way, there's a thing with that as well. Like, like because it doesn't give hexproof to Xenon, it targets another character. If your opponent mm. is playing TLR, the Yamis have hexproof and shit, or if you're yeah. playing against uh, some of the AOT stuff with uh, Resisting Fate Army and gives people hexproof and shit like that, you can't mm. do it on those characters. And yeah. that's where Machine of Ice is like, well, I'm going to have a little bit of a problem, but I can still shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> But that, because the Yoko does that, the, the whole X-Proof thing, it kind of fixes that and makes it just good. Personal opinion. Yeah. I don't care, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, and, the fa- and it's also level zero, and it's your, and it's your main it's your main Brainstormer, so yeah. she's basically going to be there the entire game, essentially. Means her price tag's going to be fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that that Yoko card was made so that, like, mm-hmm. it actually makes this card viable. Yeah. But people think people were like, ah, God, I know I'm gonna get more hate for this. I don't, I don't care. Um, before we get to the whole disconnect combo as well, people just look at a card and just kind of write it off. Or not just this, but this happens with a lot of sets. They just tend to people just tend to write shit off without looking at other cards in the set or go, how does this combo together? Use a little fucking yes. creativity, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's just that yeah. you you can't really judge a set before it, it, it gets released, and uh, I really do put a, a lot of emphasis on that. Yeah, and it's just like because because again because like this card got announced like only like half like about like halfway in between the leaks. Yeah, and then like and then like literally a week before Grand Logon came out, they were just dishing out a lot of good cards like like being released, and it was just like they were showing the Nia, the Viral. The Yoko Brainstormer. It was just like, they were mm-hmm. dishing a lot of good cards, and it was just like, that's why you can't blow up and say this you know, this set is trash mm-hmm. when it's just like they actually have decent effects all around. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not just saying this, like, I know we're both not just saying this because we like the series or anything of that nature. I'm not saying this is going to be the greatest thing ever. I, I apply this same thought, T-H-O-T, whatever, to, to any set that comes out. Look through the whole thing first, for fuck's sake. Like, sure, Gurnlogan may not yeah. be the most amazing thing since sliced bread, yeah. but if you combo shit together, it has very good chances of doing some damage. And yeah. I'm going to look at it more on the English meta perspective than JP. I don't... I, I know very little of JP stuff. Like I said, we're gonna. I'm going to try to get in other people to explain this next ban list to me, but... Yeah. I, just going off of English, I, I mean, can see this set's going to get played. It's something that people are going to have to look out for. You might as well go ahead and fucking deal with it right now and strap on your fucking helmets. So, yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. please carry on. Bro. Honestly, I, I'm pretty positive that that one one Yoko is going to be pretty impactful. Like that yeah. car's just nuts. Exactly. Um, and then my last point on red, as far as for that is, I really like it's it's the. The Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagen, basically the final form, quote unquote, being able to do its combo and bounce into, like, like I think ends up being like five attacks. Yep, that's so, correct. That's like so cool to me. It's like, sure, it's a hefty yeah. cost from hand, which yeah. I've seen some crazy ass cost from hand. The fucking Exodia Bang Dream combo is like four stock and three cards from hand. It's like, what the fuck? But either way, I, I still like both. And yeah. uh, you, I already tell you right now, you're about to see a deck profile when that shit comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to be messing around with that. Like, I don't care if it's not the greatest thing in the world. I'm going to fucking try it. And that's what I encourage people to do. That's why I try to make one. I try to make budget decks so much. I know for anyone who checks out the channel a lot, you're going to see like uh, Joe Schmo put together like a fucking playlist of just budget deck stuff. Like I like to see creative shit. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna try for that. So anyway, yeah, I'm What's actually up? I'm yeah. actually planning on building this deck myself as well because it's just mm-hmm. like because in my box openings, I basically essentially got all the pieces oh, to the whole Tegan Topa engine, and all all I literally was missing was just the um just three more copies of the uh, original just Gurren Log on the one zero, and that was basically it. Oh damn! 
I even I even pulled literally when I was opening my box, my first pack, I got the triple rare uh, my drills the my drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens. Oh dude. Oh man. I gotta look up the art for that now. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. Like and the rarities I will give the set this. The rarities and like the trip like the triple rares the super rares and like they, they look gorgeous. They look so good because they actually put a spiral design into it. Oh shit. Yeah, it looks really good. They See, did a really good job with the rarities. That's gonna look really awesome in person, straight up, because oh man. Like like you can only show but so much as far as like like throw like a scan of a picture on a website or whatever. Seeing that in person is probably gonna look so much better. Yeah, it's like how the fucking ultimate rares look in Yu-Gi-Oh. Some of those look okay, some of those don't, but that's whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can't really tell when you're just looking at like a, a scanned picture on the internet. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, that this dude, that's awesome. So cool. I'm gonna have to get up with you on as far as uh, coming up with a deck list for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but anywho, that that is some crazy ass shit. Um. For the anti-spiral thing, I know you stated uh, earlier the... Or, or sorry, for blue cards. There's only like 11 cards. The level 3 was really cool. Um, being able to look at the top couple cards of your opponent's deck and potentially get some climaxes out of there is really cool as far as an effect. Mm. Um, Especially if they're compressed. Like. Absolutely. It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you should have 8 climaxes in a 12-card deck. You know? <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. That's a joke, but that's whatever. I know we joked about that with uh, Benley when he was at Worlds. Like, mm-hmm. like <laughs> he supposedly had a lot of potential cancels in his deck and then just ate all of the damage that came his way. It's like, oh, well, yep, all my climaxes were stacked to the bottom or some shit like that. I don't know. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I know Moroku was interested in the anti-spiral stuff as far as trying to get all that uh, as well. So... Uh, shout outs to him. So that's good. More undertakings of budget decks and shit we're going to be trying. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like, I know we've been preaching for a bit now, and it's uh, about to get to as far as the end time here. Um, any thoughts on the other blue cards and or just thoughts on the set in general? I know I've already voiced a mm-hmm. lot of mine at this point, yeah. but <laughs> please, please, as well, mm-hmm. whatever you had as far as as well, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, as far as blue goes, I mean, it seems like, uh, like, I'll give them this, like, the Anti-Spiral Nia and the, uh, and just, like, the Anti-Spiral, the level zero, like, those cards are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely provides them, uh, enough utility to keep them going. Mm-hmm. Um, however, though, because, because the deck relies on Mugen so much, like, you're relying so much on that card itself, mm-hmm. as well as the utility that, like, if... Just kind of like with Titans, if you don't get the right combo pieces that you need at the necessary time, you'll basically just be running on fumes, essentially. Mm-hmm. As, as, especially when like um, when you're losing the damage race, when you're just getting like soul rush, essentially. That's yeah, true too. That's like another problem. Sometimes like decks like Titans and probably potentially this deck, when you soul rush them really quickly mm-hmm. and they just aren't able to um, reallocate resources fast enough. Um, it'll just basically just fall apart, and they won't be able to do anything about it. Um, so if you're playing against someone who's brand new, and they're like, yeah, this is my first day playing this game, watch out for a three level zeros and a plus two soul first turn. Anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, I guess, uh, and then I guess before I go for my final thoughts, um, also the, the counter, the event counter that the anti sprawls have is pretty nasty. Oh, There's shit, a pretty yes. nasty counter. Let me pull that up real quick while you're still going eh. Alright, I got it. Um, Death Spiral Machine. This this thing, one, looked crazy. Um, people didn't exactly understand how this worked, and I had to explain this to Moroku. It's a level 3, 2-cost blue event. It's a counter. So, you pay the cost, choose two of your opponent's characters that aren't in battle, then stand them and swap them. Now, this basically states you can move characters on your opponent's field. The thing is with this, your basic, the best scenario is you grab something in the front row that you don't want to deal with and you swap it with something in the back row that you don't mind dealing with. Um, yeah. Which is yeah. why it's only two stock. It's like, okay, your opponent's still going to get an attack off. It may end up being less damage 
depending on what you grab from the back row, like if it's only a level two or a level zero or something, it's mm-hmm. whatever. But, you know, what? let's say we've been talking about last shot seen on in this. Let's say they have, they don't have the stock yet for a last shot seen on and they have to swing with something else first. They do that. And you put last shot seen on in the back row. You ain't got to deal with phantom bullet that turn. <laughs> so yeah, basically like that's like more one of the extreme situations, but SAO is being heavily played right now. So that could easily happen. Mm. Uh, fucking what clock shooters, you know, if they don't attack with a clock shooter first or something of that nature or, uh, restanders, Fucking um, Eris Restander from Konosuba, stuff like that. So, eh, mm-hmm. get get those out of like off from the front row from being able to do their extra shenanigans. Yeah, it's kind of situational depending on the set you're playing against. Sure, but eh, still. Yeah, fun, it can definitely airport. change the end game very very quickly. Hmm. Uh, absolutely. Um. I would be interested to see how much of an impact it has in JP. I could see it doing that event doing a little bit more in English than JP, but that's personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. um, but yeah, no, that, that's another event that was like kind of crazy. <laughs> but people yeah. were like, what the fuck does this even do? And I'm like, it saves your ass potentially. Yeah. Anyway, it could um, basically ruin their whole end game essentially. Yeah. Oh man. That'd be crazy. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I guess going into my final so- uh, final thoughts of the Gurren Lagann set, mm-hmm. uh, I can definitely say uh, I overall think I'm I think I'm satisfied with the set to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of effects that are pretty good all around in each color. Uh, I will admit there are some things that could have been done a little bit better yeah. with some cards. Um, some minor disappointments with certain cards as well. Yeah. Um, there are certain things I didn't expect to happen with certain cards in the sets, but but other than that, I think the set's about average. And playtesting this deck so far, 15 times essentially, like it it's pretty okay. Like it's it's not that bad. And I overall, I'm happy that it's in Weiss, and uh, I'm I'm just, I'm happy. I'm enjoying playing it honestly. <laughs> Absolutely. I, shit, I'm glad it's finally here as well. I kind of would have... I would have expected this set to be in Weiss like at the fucking beginning. As old as this anime is. It's whatever. Yeah. But... Mm. I, it's going to be a bit before I can join you on the test playing portion of it. Because i got to wait for it to come out in English. But yeah. when I do, bro, we're going to be tossing some deck lists back and forth. I guarantee you. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. But, yeah, like, sure, I enjoy the series... I, I'm still going to point out good stuff in the set, but yeah, sure. This this has some this set does have some stuff that could have been done differently. But at the same time, I'm still interested. I'm still going to fucking play it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still going to grab two trial deck pluses and see what the fuck I can do. <laughs> yeah. So. Anywho, you got plenty of you know months to save up for it in English at this point. With shit, we don't have anything coming out for like three fucking months anyway. Like after P five, mm-hmm. that is. It's like, oh man. Anyway. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like, so you heard it here, kids. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed listening. As far as our thoughts on uh, this set, I say uh, kick logic to the curb and do the impossible. And yep, pretty yeah. much. So, done. Uh, <laughs> with that, I uh, want to say thank you very much, Frank. Uh, thank you for being on and definitely try to get you on some more in the future as far as in uh, future podcast and whatnot. Um, yeah. but yeah, uh, you don't have a, you don't have a YouTube or anything to a YouTube channel to, ta- uh, to, as far as like to tag in this or anything, do you? Oh, uh, I actually don't, unfortunately. Twitch, anything, stream, anything we throw, we throw some people towards Twitch for you. I don't know. Um, uh, as far as I guess anything goes, um, I mean, I have an Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go check out Frank's Instagram. I'm kidding. Uh, maybe. No. No, go check out Bentley's Instagram. Anyway. Um, yeah. With that, uh, thank you all very much for listening. Please subscribe if you want. If not, hey, just thanks for listening to us rant about cards for almost an hour at this point. Uh, with that, uh, we will see you all on the flip side. Peace. Don't lose your way. <laughs>